Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir bin Mohamad's visit to the country expected to further enhance the diplomatic ties between the Philippines and Malaysia. Meralco rates to go up this March. Bicameral Conference Committee approves a bill seeking to reduce the country's electricity rates. And the Philippines wins back-to-back -back in stars of Albion Grand Prix in London. Good evening. The bilateral ties of the Philippines and Malaysia will be further enhanced through Prime Minister Mahathir bin Mohamad's visit in the country. Rosalie Kos tells us why. The diplomatic relations of the Philippines and Malaysia was established in 1959 and it was in 1993 when the Joint Commission meeting was created to develop cooperation between the two countries according to the Department of Foreign Affairs. Through this mechanism, 20 agreements, protocols and declarations have been signed to date covering education, culture, tourism, defense, consular, political security, economy and the environment. Malaysia has also played an important role as a facilitator in the peace talks between the Philippine government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF. Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir bin Mohamad has returned to the country, his first official visit after being re-elected. It can be noted that in 1987 and 1994, PM Mahathir visited the Philippines. Meanwhile, the issue on Sabah is not on the agenda of the bilateral meeting of President Duterte and PM Mahathir. This is contrary to an earlier statement from Malacanang. The Philippines has been claiming Sabah, but PM Mahathir in a report said the Philippines has no claims which has been denied by Malacanang. And what's the position of the palace? We don't have claims on Sabah. Oh, hindi ba the position of the president, as you said, mm -hmm. meron tayong claim. Ito to namang may claim tayo, di ba? That's, uh, there has been a bone of contention ever since mm -hmm. time pa yata ni Presidente Marcos yun eh. Yung has, Saba issue. Has the President been pursuing this a promise that he will pursue our claims on it's Saba? It's not in the agenda, All right. as I know. Since assuming office, President Duterte has been enhancing the country's ties with Malaysia and Indonesia to resolve the problem on terrorism and criminality in the Sulu Sulawesi. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. Senate President Vicente Soto III and House Speaker Gloria Macapagal Arroyo paid courtesy call to Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir bin Mohamad today. In a 30-minute meeting, the Malaysian Prime Minister discussed his government's measures in improving its economy. The House leadership, meanwhile, recognized the role Malaysia played in the peace process in Mindanao that had paved way to the creation of the Bangsamoro Basic Law. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo clarifies that Narcolis or the list of politicians and government officials involved in illegal drug trade is not a product of wiretapping. He maintains wiretapping is illegal in the country and if other nations willingly supply information about criminal activities through wiretapping. This is used by the law enforcement agencies as leads for surveillance. However, Panelo insisted he has no information about any country conducting wiretapping against Filipino citizens which is opposite from his previous declarations. I was not also making a statement that the narcolis is based on that. My elucidation was more on a general term. The narcolis, there are many sources. One of them is surveillance, information coming from the uh, surrender and mga na arrest, pati na yung high tech technology o oh, doon doon na pasok yung supposed to be wire tapping The prices of vegetables in Metro Manila are expected to increase while Merak consumers may expect a spike in their monthly power bills this March John Nano explains why Households will have to pay higher electric bills this month as the Manila Electric Company or Meralco increases its power rate by more than 8 centavos per kilowatt hour of consumption. A typical household consuming 200 kilowatt hours will have an increase of around 18 pesos in their total bill. 
for 300 kilowatt hour consumption. The monthly power bill will be 27 pesos more. 36 pesos will be added per 400 kilowatt hours consumed monthly, and 45 pesos if power consumption in a month reaches 500 kilowatt hours. Meralco explains that the power rate hike is due to the increase of charges from the wholesale electricity spot market due to tighter supply conditions in Luzon as well as the more frequent plant outages this month. Although officially the dry season has not begun, Meralco explains that it is a normal trend that power rate increases during the dry season. The next four months, uh, March, April, May, and probably uh, middle part of towards the middle part of June, makikita na hunin niyo si sipa na huyong konsumo. With that, uh, you can expect electricity bills to go up as well, dahil mas madami kang ginagamit na kuryente. So, as demand increases and supply right now is uh, a bit challenged because of the, the series of yellow alerts, then there will be definitely be pressure for prices to go higher. Based on Meralco's forecast, it is expected that there will be a spike in power demand due to El Nino, specifically in May. Meralco said, however, they are implementing measures to ensure there will be no power outages on the day of the elections. Um, we are all planning na wag, 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 kata, wag tayo magkaroon ng, ng any adverse uh, events, pero we are also prepared for any uh, possibility to ensure na hindi naman disrupted ang election. Meanwhile, thousands of Manila water customers are experiencing weak water pressure as the water in La Mesa Dam has reached its critical level. Manila Water gets its water supply from the La Mesa Dam to sustain customers in some parts of Rizal, Marikina, Pasig, and Taguig. Unang-una, uh, inannounce na ng pag-asa na meron tayong uh, El Nino. Kinakailangang mag-reduce tayo ng production. So, ibig sabihin, medyo kulang yung ano natin, yung supply. Tapos ngayon na uh, malapit na sa critical level yung lamesa, may further reduction ka pa. So, ibig sabihin nito, medyo talagang tight yung supply natin. The prices of vegetables in Balintawak market is expected to rise as toll rates on the North Luzon Expressway increases beginning March 20. Mataas ang toll gate po. Tataas din yung gulay gawa ng ano, yung mga biyahera po namin. Malaking gastos nila, babawi nila ngayon sa mga gulay. Kasi tataas ang ano, toll gate, di tataas din ang tracking. Bigay ng gulay, tataas din. Apektadig ang mga tendera. In the open system covering Balintawak, Mindanao Avenue, Karuhatan, Valenzuela, Kalookan, Maykawayan, and Marilao in Bulacan, additional 10 pesos will be imposed on all Class 1 vehicles, 22 pesos for Class 2, and 29 pesos for Class 3. Toll rates in closed system will also increase by 18 centavos per kilometer. This translates to an additional 22 peso charge for Class 1 vehicles, 56 pesos for Class 2, and 67 pesos for Class 3 vehicles. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasig City. The Bicameral Conference Committee approves the Murang Corriente Bill, which aims to reduce electricity rates in the country. Nel Maribohok tells us why. The Bicameral Conference Committee today agreed on several differing provisions of the two versions of the Murang Kuryente Bill. The said bill will provide direct assistance to consumers to reduce their monthly electricity bills. This is by using the more than 200 million peso Malampaya fund to pay the stranded contract cost and stranded debt of state-owned National Power Corporation or NAPOCOR. These two items are in the electricity bill shouldered by consumers. Kung makikita natin sa ating electricity bill, meron doon universal charges for stranded costs and stranded debts. So yun, mawawala ka agad uh, yung buong uh, universal charges. So ang makikita talaga ng ating consumers, yung 22 cents, disappear na po yan. And in case magkaroon ng increase, wala na pong increase because this Murang Corriente Act already shouldered yung lahat ng increases na projected ng PISAM. Napukor's 466 billion peso debt will be paid through a staggered payment. In the first year of the implementation of the Murang Kuryente Act, a typical household with a 200 kilowatt hour usage may have savings of approximately 50 pesos per month. After years of implementation of the law, all debts will have been paid. Consumers may save up to 170 to 200 pesos in their monthly electricity bill. 
Residential, commercial and industrial connections are all covered by this law. It is expected that during the Congress session resumption in May, the bill will be ratified. After which, the bill will await President Rodrigo Duterte's signature for it to become a law. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. House Committee Appropriations Vice Chairperson Mark Sambar refutes Senator Panfilo Lacson's allegations of manipulations in the ratified 2019 proposed national budget. According to Lacson, Speaker Gloria Macapagal Arroyo had prepared and imposed the menu list of the Department of Health Appropriations for Health Facilities Enhancement Program where 25 million pesos allocated for congressmen she favors including a 2.5 million peso allocation for the purchase of an ambulance. The pananaw ng tao in terms of manipulation is may pinasa na tapos pinalitan pa. Wala po kaming ginagawang ganyan. Meanwhile, Senate Committee on Health Chairman Joseph Victor Ejercito is worried on the alleged realignment of the budget. According to the senator, the alleged budget realignment may affect the implementation of the government's universal health care program. We expect more people, we expect more patients. Eh, wag naman sanang madadivert na naman elsewhere. Kasi nga, as it is right, over capacity na nga ang ating mga government hospitals. Eh. There is no assurance yet if Malacanang already received a copy of the proposed budget for President Duterte's approval. Meanwhile, there are no reported complaints of harassment from the Filipino fishermen near Pag-asa Island. According to the Armed Forces of the Philippines' Western Command spokesperson Captain Cheryl Tindog, the troops of Joint Task Force West are in constant communication with the fishermen and they have not received any reports of harassment. They also added that the claims of Kalayaan Mayor Roberto Del Mundo on China's alleged harassment of fishermen at a sand decay had no basis. Westcom also showed a satellite image plotting the locations of monitored fishing vessels in the Philippines along the Pagasa Island from January 1, 2018 to March 5, 2019. Westcom continues to encourage local fishermen to continue their activities in the area. The Department of National Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana previously ordered AFP to verify the report of Kalayaan Mayor Roberto Del Mundo about China harassing Filipino fishermen in Sandy Cay. The Philippines wins back-to-back -back in an international performing arts festival and competition in London, which is exceptional. Here's why from Javik Bermas. Two-season Filipino performing artists won at starts of the Albion Grand Prix 2019 held in London from March 1 to 3. 40-year-old Marlon Macabaya, who hails from Malay Balay Bukidnon, was crowned the first placer for his rendition of Somewhere, while Denise Melanie Dula Grossa from Rizal landed second place. This is the second time Filipinos have been hailed the grand winners in the competition, which is unprecedented according to founder and executive producer Evgenia Tarantieva. Your nation is incredibly talented. I look forward to new talents, obviously, coming from Philippines. Guest artist and member of the panel of judges Alexa Paul was amazed by Marlon's performance. Grand Prix from UK from London 2019. Grand Prix goes to Philippines. The decision was very difficult, but the level was very, very high. So thank you very much for such a beautiful singing. We really enjoyed it. Last year, Rachel Gabreza of the Organisasyon ng Mga Pilipinong Mga Awit was hailed the stars of Albion Grand Prix 2018 winner. Meanwhile, in a statement, Ambassador Antonio M. Lagdameo said that by winning in this international competition, Marlon and Denise have proven once more that Filipino talent is indeed world class. 
Marlon expressed his thanks for his momentous victory. Bago ang lahat siguro, oh, gusto ko magpasalamat sa nasa taas. Oo, oh, dahil kung wala siya, wala na ba to? Wala to. Of course, dito sa mga magulang ko at saka sa mga sa kapatid ko. Maraming maraming salamat kasi nagsilbi tayo parang inspirasyon sa isa't isa para lumaban at bitbitin yung Pilipinas. The two bested someone hired contenders from 23 countries including United Kingdom, China, Russia, USA, Israel, Malta, Italy, Greece and Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Jovic Bermas, UNTV News and Rescue, London, United Kingdom. Up next on Y News. More than 2,000 policemen sacked over their alleged involvement in illegal activities according to the data from the Philippine National Police. A trove of Albert Einstein papers unveiled in Jerusalem. And learn about the things you need to avoid during a fire incident. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of One News. More reasons behind the stories with Angelo Castro III and William Theo after this quick break. I'm Rina Bolimor Camara. Good evening. Si Attorney Amado Bagatchi, dating nanilbihan bilang kongresista ng ikalimang distrito ng Maynila at nagtatag ng non-government organization na kabaka o kabalikat ng bayan sa kaundaran. Nakilala siya dahil sa kanyang pagtulong sa mga taga Maynila pagdating sa aspetong medikal, ngayong nais niyang bumalik sa serbisyo bilang vice mayoral candidate sa darating na halalan. Ano-anong mga programa kaya ang kanyang planong isulong na makapagpapaunlad sa bayan ng Maynila? Yan ang ating aalamin bukas sa programang Bawal ang Pikon! Mga kasang bahay, the hard court is set. Mula sa labing dalawang teams. Natira ang matitibay. Sa March 11, magkakaalama na alas 7 ng gabi sa Smart Araneta Coliseum. AFP Cavaliers, laban sa Senate Defenders. Mahigit 10 milyong piso ang paipagkakaloob sa beneficiaries ng mga team, tax-free. Ang natatanging basketball tournament na may puso. Maraming salamat mo talaga. Salamat po ng maraming. UN TV Cup, ang liga ng public servants. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up from where Rina Villamor Camara left off. I'm Angelo Diego Castro III, and here are the headlines. Malacanang distances itself from Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte's statement that honesty should not be an issue in this year's elections. Former Senator Jingoy Ejercito dares opposition senatorial candidates to debate in the Senate if they win in the midterm elections. PNP data shows more than 2,000 policemen have been sacked over alleged illegal activities. And a trove of Albert Einstein papers unveiled in Jerusalem. Malacanang refuses to react on Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio's statement that honesty should not be an election issue. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panela will have to ask President Rodrigo Duterte on his position about the statement of his daughter, Davao City Mayor Inday Sara Duterte. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. The statement of the presidential daughter has become controversial in which she said that honesty should not be an issue nowadays. Inday Sara made the statement when asked about the allegation against former Special Assistant of the President Bongo, who is allegedly using public funds for his senatorial bid. Sinasabi ko sa kanilang lahat, walang 
isang kandidato dyan na hindi nagsisinungaling kaya hindi dapat nagiging issue ang maayos din ngayon. Ang gagawin natin sa kanila na they deliberately say false statements on stage about against the administration of President Duterte. So, lahat sila sinungaling lahat ng tao sa mundong ito sinungaling. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said that it is the presidential daughter's opinion while he refused to answer if he agrees with the statement. He also said that it is unlawful for him to make a statement that will favor or disfavor any candidate or party. Is honesty important to the president? I will have to ask him that. Huh? <laughs> Siyempre, I mean, that's a personal... Para kumbaga... Kasi baka si, gaya ni Mayor Sara, kay Mayor Sara, hindi importante yung honesty for this particular okay. election. His description of some oh. of his candidates, and I quote, fundamentally honest. If he makes, if he comes up with such description, what does this say about his opinion about honesty? You know, si Presidente, yeah. mm. I will ask him exactly what does he mean by fundamentally honest. Kasi if it's no, you know, you mean, if it's not big deal, why would he even describe his candidates as Fundamentally, and siguro his dealings with him shows that he was, or the candidate was honest during his stint. So hindi natin alam yung stand pa ni Presidente about voting honest candidates. Hindi ko, ang, basta ang stand ni Presidente, let's have a credible, honest election. Yun ang sinasabi na. A credible and honest election. Honest election, ibig sabihin, walang daya ang election. Panelo also pointed out that no one can determine whether a candidate is honest or not unless voters know the candidate personally. Unang-una, yung mga kandidato, you cannot say whether one is honest or not kasi I have no dealings with them. Strictly speaking, you cannot consider a candidate honest or not unless you have personally dealt with him or her. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. After opposition candidates expressed their intent to hold a debate with rival parties, former Senator Jingo Estrada of Hukpong ng Pagbabago now also dares a debate. Grace Cassin tells us why. Uy, ano ba naman kayo? Uh, Unang-una, si Inday, Mayor Inday Sara ang nagsalita, handa yung grupo. Pero... Walang dumating. This is the statement of former Congressman Erin Tanyada when hugpong ng pagbabago senatorial candidate did not show up after they challenged the group to have a debate with his side. But former Senator Jingoy Estrada answered, Dilaw na ito, kala rin. Nagahap ko pa na pag-debate ng mga logot ko. Abunin ko sa debate sa July, pagbukas ng Senado. Tumanan na ano sila. Yesterday, hugpong ng pagbabago, Senatorial Bets, Ilocos Norte Governor Amy Marcos, former Bucor Chief Ronald Bato de la Rosa, Congressman Dong Mangunda Dato, Senator Coco Pimentel III, Senator J.V. Ejercito, and former Senator Jingoy Estrada, Frances Tolentino, Congresswoman Pia Caetano, former Assistant to the President Bongo, journalist Jiggy Manikad, former Senator Ramon Bong Revilla Jr. and hugpong ng pagbabago chairperson Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio held a campaign rally in Paranaque City and Las Piñas. While only three senatorial candidates from Ocho Derecho, Samira Guto, Congressman Gary Alejano, and Erin Tanyada went to General Santos City today to campaign. Grace Cassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. More than 2,000 cops have been relieved from their service after getting involved in illegal activities. Lea Ilagan explains why. The Philippine National Police or PNP does not condone the illegal acts of men in uniform. PNP spokesperson Colonel Bernard Banak said that from 2016 to February 2019, more than 8,000 policemen were penalized with disciplinary actions. More than 2,000 has been relieved from the service, including the more than 400 policemen involved in illegal drugs. More than 4,000 policemen are also facing administrative cases. Colonel Banak revealed that those who usually get involved in illegal activities are the non-commissioned officers with ranks patrolman to police executive master sergeant. Well, ang mga patrolman natin, mga patrolwoman, ang madalas na nasasangkot sa mga illegal na gawain dahil uh, 
sila ang may pinakamaraming bilang sa buong hanay ng PNP. At sila yung nakakalat sa buong komunidad, sa mga lansangan, at yung nakakas- direktang nakakasalamuha ng ating mga mamamayan. Kaya nandoon lahat ang lahat ng sitwasyon, maging mga impluensya, mabuti at masama. Colonel Banak added that the PNP leadership wants to focus not only on police recruits training but also on their values. This is one of the reasons why they wanted to handle the training of the police recruits which is presently being supervised by the Philippine Public Safety College. Ang tinitingnan natin ng mga factors dito maliban uh, sa training ay yung mismong pag-uugali ng ating mga kasamahan na alam naman natin na ito ay na-form na, nabuo na prior pa man na pumasok sila sa PNP. Among the police officers facing charges are Police Corporal Anwar Nasser, including his three cohorts from Pasay Station Drug Enforcement Unit and PO2 Marlo Kibete of the Eastern Police District's Drug Enforcement Unit for extorting money from an alleged drug suspect. Seven other policemen from Las Piñas are facing kidnap for ransom cases. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue, Camp Krame. This Women's Month, let us know the Philippines' standing in terms of prosecuting and convicting those involved in abuse against women. My Bermudez will tell us why. In 2015, Nadine became a victim of harassment by a driver she hired through a ride-sharing app she booked then. Years have passed, yet she still remembers the driver's lascivious acts. She recounts that her outfit back then was not much revealing. That is why she cannot believe she could be a victim too. But it seems to her that clothes are not the basis of such perpetrators. Nung pag ganun ko, hinawakan niya na yung kamay ko. So, sabi ko, pawak naman. Sabi ko, kuya, teka lang, bitawan mo. Sabi niya, nagja-jive po kayo. Naka-manual pa siya. So, kailangan niya talaga yung igalaw ito. So, sabi niya, sandali lang naman. Gusto ko lang mahawakan pa na matagal. So, doon na ako parang, ano nangyayari? Kinalabutan na talaga ako. Na... But Nadine admits that reporting such incident to authorities is not as easy because she fears of being judged by people. Siyempre kapag sinabi ko to or magsubung ako, baka sabihin ang OA ng reaction ko parang hinawakan lang naman or parang hindi naman ako ganun kaganda, ang daming sasabihin. So, nakakahiya rin. United Nations data show that 35% of women worldwide experience physical or sexual abuse in their lifetime. In the Philippines, the number of complaints may be rising. But there have been developments in prosecutions, convictions, and resolutions on such cases. The number of convictions increased from last year 2017 to 2018, significantly increased because uh, employing plea bargaining as a, I would say, a strategy or as a way of um, obtaining conviction earlier rather than going through uh, a long drawn trial. This Women's Month, rights advocates are sending a message of strength and bravery for the women of today. Ang mensahe talaga, tama na itong climate ng, ng misogyny na lumalaganap ngayon. Tuloy-tuloy, tuloy-tuloy ang pagkakaisa para labanan ito at ang agenda ng kababaihan ay siya ang mamumuno. The DOJ advises women to immediately report to authorities any incidents or experience of harassment. Women can also avail of free legal services from public attorneys for any case to be elevated to the court. So, first is through the barangay level or through the police. But hindi lang yung victim yung maaari mag-report. Pwede isang concerned citizen, kapitbahay, kamag-anak, kaibigan, na alam yung mga pangyayari ng karahasan laban sa isang babae. My Bermudez, TV News and Rescue, Manila. As March has been declared the Rabies Awareness Month, the Department of Health once again reminds the public of the dangers of rabies. Almost 100% of patients bitten by unvaccinated dogs or scratched by unvaccinated cats die, according to the Health Department. Aiko Miguel explains why. Have you been bitten by a dog or scratched by a cat? 
A dog bite or a cut scratch must not be discounted, especially when the animal has not been inoculated with an anti-rabies vaccine. Rabies is a viral disease that causes inflammation of the brain in humans and other mammals. It can be transferred to humans through a rabid animal's bite or scratch. Ang problema kasi sa rabies, kaya tayo napaka mga ingat dyan, parang rabies at tetanus kasi itong mga sakit na to, alos walang nagsusurvive pag nagumpisa na yung sakit. It's too late. DOH Undersecretary Eric Domingo added that the number of rabies cases in the country increases during school vacation. Siyempre pag bakasyon yung mga bata, wala na sa eskwela, naglalaro maghapon, naglalaro sa kalye, and then dito tayo talaga nagkakaroon tayo ng dumadami ng cases ng nakakagat ng aso. Rose Ancondeno has a daughter who was scratched by a cat. She said her daughter has not yet been administered with an anti-rabies vaccine. Naglalaro siya nung time na dyan. Tapos uh, biglang may naghabulan na pusa at aso. So siya yung nakalmot ng pusa. Kinuskus ko lang ng bawang tapos may nagsabi nga sa akin na pa-injectionan siya. Pero tinignan ko naman medyo mababaw kaya hindi naman na siya na ano, hindi siya nilag na. The DOH advises parents to have their children vaccinated as soap and water is not enough to treat a dog bite or a cat scratch. Hindi pa rin tayo nakakasigurado okay. siyempre. No? Kailangan pa rin natin yung antibodies na lalaban sa rabies. In April 2018, the World Health Organization reported that the supply of anti-rabies vaccines for humans had been contaminated. This has resulted in a shortage in the anti-rabies vaccine worldwide, including the Philippines. So we're asking everybody to be extra careful kasi talagang meron pa tayong shortage ng ating ano ng ating anti-rabies vaccines for humans sa buong mundo. The DOH reminds the public to be extra careful, especially the children, as rabies can also be transferred to humans when an unvaccinated dog or cat licks an open human's wound. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. It's March and it's the Fire Prevention Month. It's uh, no more the do's and don'ts in case of fire from Monoxon. New City Commercial Center Shopping Mall Fire in Davao City, December 2017. Kentex Manufacturing Fire in Valenzuela, May 2015. Ozone Disco Fire in Quezon City, March 1996. This account for the top worst fire incidents in the country to date. Much damage on properties. Many lives claimed. All happened in places that people frequent. For the safety of the public after such scenarios, the government has formed policies to prevent more losses of properties and lives. But the public must also remember it is important that they do their part to be prepared in times of tragedies such as fire. Here are the do's and don'ts in case of a fire incident. According to the 911 UNTV rescue team, Upon entry in a shopping mall or any establishment, one must know the location of the fire or emergency exit. Psychologically speaking, and uh, pagka mayroong mga emergencies talaga, ang nagiging common notion ng bawat tao is kung saan sila pumasok ay doon din sila lalabas. Uh, yun ang alam ng tao, so dumadagsa yung tao. So yung capacity ng uh, pinto ay hindi niya kayang i-accommodate lahat ng ano, no? mga lumalabas. Don't panic! become in an emergency situation. Kasi kahit na anong galing natin, anong practice natin, pagka na-overwhelm tayo ng ating emotion, so nawawala yung ating ano eh, yung tamang decision making. When trapped in a room where smoke begins to enter, do use a wet cloth or towel to cover the nose and mouth to avoid suffocation or asphyxiation. Don't rush into the direction where there is thick smoke, as suffocation can be fatal. We need to drop So kailangan talaga natin gumapang kasi uh, yung uh, good oxygen ay nandoon sa baba. Kasi yun ang nagiging number one cause ng death during sa fire. Do find a way to get out of the house or building and don't enter a bathroom. Pagka nandiyan na daw yung apoy, ay magbubuhos lang sila which is mali po. Dahil nga katulad ng sinabi ko kanina, number one cause ng nagiging death is yung smoke inhalation. Don't open a door right away in case of fire. 
Better feel the door first to know if it's hot as it might be burning. Upon witnessing a fire incident, don't take a video or photo of a fire incident first. Instead, do call for help which is a priority. Do remember these pieces of advice as they can save lives in case of fire. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue. Dozens of manuscripts belonging to Albert Einstein, many of them unseen in the public before, have been unveiled by the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Jovik Bermas will tell us why. Israel's Hebrew University unveiled on Wednesday a collection of 110 manuscript pages written by Albert Einstein, many of which it said have never been displayed before. They include handwritten mathematical notes, most from 1944 to 1948, and also an appendix which the school said was thought lost to a paper on unified field theory that a German-born physicist presented to the Prussian Academy of Science in 1930. These papers reflect the way Einstein was thinking, the way Einstein was working. Most of them in his handwriting are mathematical derivations, mathematical calculations with very little text. They are summaries of his thoughts. Whenever he something struck him, a new idea, he sat down immediately, scribbled it, looking for its consequences. Einstein, who developed the theory of relativity, a pillar of modern science, tried unsuccessfully for decades to prove another concept, that electromagnetism and gravity were different manifestations of a single fundamental field. Hebrew University said it received the papers as a donation to its 80,000-item Albert Einstein archives from a foundation in Chicago after they were purchased from a private collector in North Carolina. Einstein, who settled in the United States after renouncing his German citizenship when Adolf Hitler came to power, bequeathed his scientific and personal writings to Hebrew University. Einstein, who won the 1921 Nobel Prize for Physics, died in New Jersey in 1955. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue. The woodwork of a twin in an English village reaches as far as castles of royal families in the United Kingdom and in the Middle East. Here's why from Nina Armilio. In the village of Betherston in Kent, southeast England, a restorer carefully removes the saddle of an old rocking horse, preparing it for repair. Hammer in hand, a finisher drives nails into a saddle blanket on a newly carved, stained, and polished wooden model. The rocking horses are among dozens being worked on or on display at Stevenson Brothers, a British business dedicated to the handcraft of the traditional toy. Twins Mark and Tony Stevenson have been making the bespoke replicas in their workshop for 37 years for royal families in the Middle East and in other European countries. The twins' work includes models for Britain's Queen Elizabeth, a longtime horse and racing enthusiast. With Prince Harry and his wife Meghan Markle expecting their first child this spring, could the royal offspring one day ride such a rocking horse? We'd like to think that the, 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 royal, the royal children will be given a rocking horse, of course. Um, and who knows, you know, it just might happen that we get a commission for, for the latest baby. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. Up next on Why News. I would be very disappointed if that were happening. U.S. President Donald Trump says he would be disappointed in North Korean leader Kim Jong-un if reports about its launch site is true. Syrian refugee eyes swimming shot at the 2020 Olympics. And a Spanish cattle farmer proves that skating is not just for people in the city. And those are the reasons behind the stories in the second part of our newscast. Why News returns with William Theo. Emmanuel Castro III, good evening.
And to complete the most significant news for this day, why news continues here are the top stories. Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir bin Mohamed expresses support on the ratification of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARMM during his official visit to the Philippines. Rosa de Cos explains why. Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir bin Mohamed is delighted with the warm welcome of the Philippine government led by President Rodrigo Duterte during his official visit in the Philippines from March 6 to 7. The two governments conducted an expanded bilateral meeting in which both expressed commitment to further intensify cooperation, especially in maintaining peace and stability in the region. PM Hatir also said he supports the ratification of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARMM. He also expressed Malaysia's commitment to continue to help in the development of Mindanao. I look forward to the smooth transition of the ARMMM to the interim government of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region for Muslim Mindanao. President Duterte thanked Malaysia for its continued support to the Philippines. The Philippine chief executive conveyed Malaysia will always have a prominent role in the Philippines' roster of friends. Let me again say the Philippines' destiny is in ASEAN and in Asia. Asia's destiny is in Asia. Malaysia, the Philippines' partner for progress, on Brother for Peace will continue to play an important role as we generate and continue to progress our shared aspirations for the greater peace, progress, prosperity, and stability in the ASEAN region. Meanwhile, among the agreements expected to be signed sooner between Malaysia and the Philippines is the Memorandum of Understanding on Health as well as the intensified cooperation in addressing the issue of terrorism and violent extremism through the trilateral cooperation together with Indonesia. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanã. Meanwhile, households will have to pay higher electric bills this month as the Manila Electric Company or Meralco increases its power rate by 8 centavos per kilowatt hour of consumption. A typical household consuming 200 kilowatt hours will have an increase of around 18 pesos in their total bill. For 300 kilowatt hour consumption, the monthly power bill will be 27 pesos more. 36 pesos will be added per 400 kilowatt hours consumed monthly and 45 pesos if power consumption in a month reaches 500 kilowatt hours. Meralco explains that the power rate hike is due to the increase of charges from the wholesale electricity spot market due to the tighter supply conditions in Luzon as well as the more frequent plant outages this month. A bicameral conference committee approves today the Murang Oriente Bill which seeks to reduce the cost of electricity in the country. And in case magkaroon ng increase, wala na pong increase because this Murang Oriente Act already shouldered yung lahat ng increases na projected ng PISAM. Kung makikita natin sa ating electricity bill, meron doon universal charges for stranded costs and stranded debts. So yun, mawawala ka agad uh, yung buong uh, universal charges. The Murang Kuryente Bill aims to source government shares on the Malampaya Fund to pay the debts of the National Power Corporation that is now being charged to consumers' monthly electric bill. Malacanang has yet to give any reaction on the statement of Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio that honesty should not be used as a campaign issue. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo said he has to seek President Rodrigo Duterte's position on the controversial statement which drew flack from political figures and the netizens. Mayor Sara made the statement when asked for her opinion on the allegation that former Special Assistant to the President Bongo is using public funds in his campaign activities as a senatorial candidate. Sinasabi ko, kanilang lahat, walang isang kandidato na hindi nagsisinwaling kaya hindi dapat nagiging issue ang maayos din ngayon. Panelo on his part said it was the presidential daughter's opinion and that 
it will be against the law for him to give any statement that will favor or go against any candidate or party. Panelo added that except when one personally knows a candidate, there is no other way to know if such candidate is honest or not. Strictly speaking, you cannot consider a candidate honest or not unless you have personally dealt with him or her. Amid the ongoing campaign period of candidates for national positions, former Senator Jingoy Estrada of Hugpong ng Pagbabago now also dares a debate. This after opposition candidates expressed their intent to hold a debate with rival parties. Uy, ano ba naman kayo? Uh, Unang-una si Inday, Mayor Inday Sara ang nagsalita, handa yung grupo, pero walang tumating. Dilaw na ito, kala mo. And for the news abroad, here's Kath Dumaraos live from Bangkok, Thailand. Kath, good evening. Good evening, William. U.S. President Donald Trump is concerned if North Korea is confirmed to be rebuilding a rocket launch site. Beverly Saison will tell us why. U.S. President Donald Trump said on Wednesday he would be disappointed in North Korean leader Kim Jong-un if reports about rebuilding at a rocket launch site in North Korea were true. Two U.S. think tanks and South Korea's Yonhap News Agency reported on Tuesday that work was underway to restore part of North Korea's Sohei satellite launching station, even as Trump met with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un at a second summit in Hanoi last week. I would be very disappointed if that were happening. Uh, it's a very early report. We're the ones that put it out. But uh, I would be very, very disappointed in Chairman Kim and I don't think I will be, but we'll see what happens. We'll take a look. It'll ultimately get solved. North Korea began work to dismantle a missile engine test stand at Sohei last year after pledging to do so in a first summit with Trump in June. A second summit between Trump and Kim broke down last week in Hanoi over differences on how far North Korea was willing to limit its nuclear program and the degree of U.S. willingness to ease sanctions. We have a very nasty problem there. We have to solve a problem. The relationship is good. Analysts say the satellite images seen by 38 North, a Washington-based North Korea project, show that structures on Sohei launch pad had been rebuilt sometime between February 16th and March 2nd. U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton earlier said North Korea could yet face more sanctions if there was no progress on denuclearization. Beverly Saison, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. Facebook boss Mark Zuckerberg has said he believes secure private messaging services will become more popular than open platforms. In a blog, Mr. Zuckerberg outlined his vision to transform Facebook into a privacy-focused platform. Facebook owns Messenger and WhatsApp, but message encryption limits its ability to make money through targeted adverts. The social media giant has become under fire for a series of privacy scandals. Venezuela has given the German ambassador 48 hours to leave the country. Meanwhile, Huawei Technology says a law limiting its business in the United States of America was unconstitutional. This report explains why. In China, Huawei has filed a lawsuit against the U.S. government over a ban that restricts government agencies from using its products. It said the U.S. failed to provide evidence to support the ban. And the firm also rejected claims it had links to the Chinese government. The U.S. has restricted the use of Huawei products over national security concerns. It has also been lobbying allies to shun the Chinese telecoms firm. In Argentina, Argentina's new school year scheduled to start on Wednesday was widely postponed until next week by a three-day strike by teachers who say their wages are not keeping up with the inflation. Seven months ahead of an election in which center-right President Mauricio Macri is expected to face tough competition from the left-leaning branch of the Peronist coalition. 
only six of the country's 24 provinces started classes on time. With Argentina in recession and inflation clocked at more than 47% last year, the economy is the main election issue. In Buenos Aires, Argentina's biggest province, teachers received a 32% raise in 2018 and want an additional 16% increase before negotiating their 2019 contract. With consumer prices expected to rise more than 30% in 2019, Voters are feeling the pain of public utility subsidy cuts under Macri's unpopular fiscal austerity program. In Venezuela, Venezuela has given the German ambassador to the country 48 hours to leave, accusing him of meddling in internal affairs. Daniel Kriner was among the diplomats who helped opposition leader Juan Guaido return to Venezuela on Monday. Germany, which recognizes Mr. Guaido as interim president, says the decision will only escalate tensions. Meanwhile, the U.S. says it is revoking the visas of 77 more people linked to President Nicolás Maduro. Vice President Mike Pence said they include government officials and their families. On Friday, 49 other people had their visas revoked as part of the U.S. pressure on Mr. Maduro to resign. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the news from the other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you very much, Kath Dumaraos, reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. A roller skating Spanish cattle farmer shows that skating is not just for the people in the city. Abby Valdez will tell us why. house all day, Pablo Pato swept the hay off the floor and transformed, almost Cinderella-like, into a freestyle roller skater without leaving the cow shed in the remote mountain village of Yanuses in northern Spain. With his toxic yellow inline skates on, the 33-year-old gathers speed on the concrete floor, jumps onto a purpose-built platform to grind his blade sideways on a rail, does a backflip, and lands in front of his gentle-eyed spectators. That's why I said me bully. The cows are my audience. They always support me. They never boo at me. Every now and then, when his duties and the harsh mountain weather allow it, Pato briefly leaves a tiny village of three dozen residents to take part in regional freestyle competitions before human audiences. But the only way he can practice is on the cattle farm. Pato's other hobbies include making videos of himself skating or the various animals on the farm with the mountain backdrop. He already has various medals won in the championships hanging on the wall. Abby Valdez, UNTV News and Rescue. A Syrian refugee in Great Britain aims for a shot in the refugee team in the 2020 Olympic Games in Japan. Nina Armilio tells us why. 24-year-old Ida Jazarli is a refugee from Syria. He thought his life was ending when he and his fellow refugees crossed the sea in search for a better life in Europe. After one hour driving, the motor just stopped and the boat stopped breaking and the people screaming. I was feeling like it's over. I'm just gonna die here. As a young man with a dream, he turned to swimming as something to excel at. One night I was just sitting at home watching YouTube and I just came across uh, a film about Michael Phelps. I just decided I want to be the new person who's swimming like Michael Phelps. When his coaches first met him, he could swim no more than three meters and did not know how to take the next breath in water. But with daily practice and keenness, his coaches saw how much he improved day by day. In 20 years of swim coaching, I've never seen an adult take to swimming so quickly and improve so rapidly. Now he dreams of emulating his swimming idol and make it into the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Al Jazeera wants to be an inspiration to his fellow youth who, like himself, have dreams. If you really have something inside your heart, if you have a dream, if you want to be a doctor, if you want to be a swimmer, teacher, if the passion is inside, 
just give it 100% and no matter what, like never stop. Nina Emilio, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news March 7, 2019. On behalf of Nina Villamor Camara and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening.